Good day, folks. This is Rhino Yosemite Roy. Although some call me Petrified Roy. A lot of folks been asking, how does he get that petrified wood so shiny and beautiful, smooth and clean? Well, today we're gonna answer all those questions. Just hang with me. First thing you need to do is have a tile saw. So you can actually cut the petrified wood, 220 million years old. Next thing you need to do, what piece do you wanna cut? We have a whole variety of gems here. And I think we're gonna go with this piece right here. I see some nice green in there. And we'll see what it reveals once we cut it. All right, let's get started. Ready then, after a nice long safety break, I'm gonna fire up the dangerous machinery here. Actually, the tile saw blade can't cut your fingers off. Rocks can get sucked in and you could get hurt, so you wanna wear your goggles and some earplugs. So it can get rather loud and annoying. Let's fire this baby up and get started. <laughs> Cut that end off. Right there. Now with rocks, you can't just push it through. You gotta kind of work it and move it with your hands. Like so. Ah, not as spectacular as I was hoping, but still very nice and some bark on there. Let's commence with the rock polishing. Now when I first went to the Petrified Forest National Park and pillaged, I came home and I thought, I'd like to polish some of these. So I went to the local hardware store, got some black sandpaper. I'm sanding. Hours later, I'm still sanding. And I thought to myself, there's gotta be a better way. So I looked into it. Oh, I'm just joking about the pillaging part. You can go to uh, private lands around that area and for 25 bucks, get yourself a big five gallon bucket. Whereas in a museum or rock shop, you're gonna get two or three rocks for 25 bucks. So definitely a way to go there and keeping it legal. So what I discovered was diamond sanding discs. Just like sandpaper, they work their way up from low to high. And you just want to start with the more abrasive and work your way on up. These go to 3,000. And then I got me a nice drill. And these are all Velcro. So I'm starting with 50. Try to get all scratches out. What I discovered is if you don't get the scratches out with the 50 or the 100, they're never leaving. So it's very crucial. Sometimes that takes a while, but after that, it's a lot easier. If you don't get them out, as you can see, the scratches will be there on your final rock, which is kind of a bummer after all the work you put into it. Now you always want to have a nice bottle ready to get things wet. I usually start with the lower grades and I do it dry. Those are the two that we just cut earlier. And then I did this extra one just uh, in case. You're going to want to wear a respirator for at least the first couple ones due to the dust is really bad for you. Now these things can cut your little fingers if you hit the edge. 
such as that little guy there see oh gosh so be careful on the edge of these things especially the metal ones okie dokie let's get going on the polishing process so I like to find my scratch and then I use the edge of this pad a little kind of like that seems to speed it up and then as that's gone you know I start going more flat like I said start low go high uh, you should wear a respirator but that makes it hard to talk to you all and then once I hit eh, around 400 I start using the water on here because that's the way to go here we are Like I said, to get rid of the first scratches can take up to a half hour or more. And then the rest are anywhere from two to four or five minutes as it gets shinier. Remember to watch your fingers. Now also, you could put the rock in the vise, like so, and then have your drill doing it this way. So that's in there. That works too. Depends on how big the rock is. For really small stuff, I keep the drill up and just try to watch my fingers. All right, so that concludes the polishing. Made it up to about 3,000. Then I bring it to my little buffing station. Now when buffing, you gotta be pretty careful. Get it nice and warm and hot and going good, but if it's a smaller rock, it will just fly out of your hands and you'll lose it in your yard or workshop. Let's review some of the sanding. So I went 50 to 3,000 and these these metal ones are pretty nice for the original getting out the scratches, maybe up to 100, 120. After that, they kind of leave more scratches, so you go to the rubber. Now, it took me about 20 minutes, man, probably a half hour to get all the scratches out of this piece. And then after that, each one's two, three minutes. And then on the last 1,500, 3,000, I give it almost four or five minutes to make sure it's extra shiny. Make sure you trim your fingernails when you do this. It can be rather dangerous. And uh, let's take a look at the final project here. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about polishing petrified wood with me. And... Uh, if you're into music, check out my music videos on this channel. Now let's check our final product here. There it is before. And here we go after. Quite the nice little chunker. I like the bark, the bark vibe on it. Not too bad on the scratching. Here's the other piece I did today. Actually like it a little better. It's just beautiful. And here's some pieces I've done in the past. <laughs>